My name is Mr. Pendergrass, and I am the elementary instrumental music teacher at Fairmount Park School here in Seattle. I'm recording this lesson from my home, and just like you, I'm stuck at home. It's giving me a chance to practice some instruments and work with my students, but I hope you can use this time to become better on your instrument. You know, a lot of times when we're really busy in the school year, we don't have enough time to practice. Now is the time to practice. In this trombone lesson, we're going to talk about how to play low notes. You know, the trombones are in the low brass section, and if you can't play low notes, it's kind of embarrassing. So we're going to talk about how to play low notes clearly and consistently. We're going to look at a song that has a low note in it that is around, and I'll tell you what that means. And we're also going to talk about this part of your face, which is called the embouchure, which is a big fancy word that you'll learn about. So take a moment now to gather the things that you're going to need for this trombone lesson. So before we start playing, I want to give you a word that I use that helps me think about practicing. You know, sometimes I can waste time if I don't have some goals in mind or some bigger concepts in mind. So here's the word. You can see it on the screen. It is brass, and brass is the stuff that your trombone is made out of. And the first B in the word brass stands for buzz and breath. We'll spend a fair amount of time talking about that today. The second letter R stands for repetition and rest. You should play something over and over again, but make sure you also rest. A is, stands for articulation and agility. S stands for sing it. And the final S stands for share it. If you think of each of these letters in the word brass, it can help you practice in a way that gives you purpose. Some of these things we're going to do today, really specifically. Some we won't. But use this word to help you practice, even after this lesson. All right, we are going to begin with that first B in brass, buzz and breath. And I want to talk about what kind of breath you use when you play the trombone. You want to use warm, fast air. What does that mean? Well, if you were to fog up, say, a mirror or a window to make condensation so you could write on it, that's the kind of air we want. So imagine you have a mirror here and you're going to fog it up. If you put your hand in front of your face and use that breath, it comes from down below here and it should feel warm on your hand. That's the air I want. And we're going to start with some buzzes with that warm, fast air. Let's just do a long buzz. Let's do a higher buzz. Notice how I pull the corners of my mouth back to get a higher buzz, and I'm still blowing that warm, fast air. Okay, let's do some lower buzzes. When I play lower, I'm going to point my chin to the ground, okay? I'll talk more about that in a minute. And then I always like to end by buzzing a song. Let's do Twinkle Twinkle Little Star. Always buzz and breath before you put your mouthpiece on your trombone, and that'll prepare your embouchure to sound great. Now I want to come back to that fancy word embouchure I just said a moment ago. Embouchure basically means your mouth or how you hold your mouth when you play your trombone. And since we're talking about low notes today, I'm going to buzz a low note and then I'm going to move my mouthpiece and I want you to see how I point my chin to the ground. Okay. I'll start with a high buzz and then watch my chin as I go down low. Oh. 
it's that feeling of pointing your chin to the ground when you play low notes combined with that warm, fast air. Well, you'll be able to play low notes with a lot of power. We're low brass, right? We want to be able to play low notes. So let me show you that again. I'm going to go from high to low. If you think of blowing that warm, fast air, pointing your chin, low notes will be really strong and clear every time you play them. Okay, now that you've been buzzing and your embouchure is in shape, let's play a song that has a low note in it. This is Mark Time from our band book. Look at that A, it's sitting down there in the bottom of the staff. It's a pretty low note. It's in second position, which is right there. First position, second position. It sounds like this. Pretty low, warm, fast air. Also in Mark Time, we have this thing called a tie. You can see it there. A tie is a curved line that connects two of the same pitch. So you see there's a B flat there that's a half note connected by one line to the other B flat, which is a quarter note. And it's one unbroken note. So when we play that B flat, it's going to be played for three beats because a half note gets two beats and a quarter note gets one. So two plus one is three. So be ready for that when we get there. Let's play Mark Time. One, two, three, four. fast air, pointing your chin to the ground for those A's and the B flats too. Let's play it again. One, two, three. You take a moment to practice. Point that chin to the ground, warm, fast air, and you'll get it. So we're going to play another song that has that note A in it, but this song is a special type of song. Take a look at it up there on the screen. Sweetly sings the donkey, and then after it says round. A round is a type of form in music. You may have sung around in your classroom or in a choir where one group starts and then they keep going, and when the first group gets to a certain spot, the second group comes in and keeps singing. A round I used to do when I was a kid was row, row, row your boat gently down the stream, that group would keep going, and then another group would come in and start row, row, row your boat. So take a look at the music here. This is a two-part round. You'll see some numbers above the measures. Those aren't measure numbers. Those tell you how many parts are in the round. This round has two parts. So when one group starts, when the first group gets to number two, another group starts playing at number one. Now, rounds are kind of hard to explain by just talking about them, so I made a recording of myself playing this as a round, because you need more than one person. So you're going to see me start the round, Sweetly Sings the Donkey, and then when I get to number two, I'm going to come in again, because I put myself in the video, playing along with it. So check out this video, and then we'll come back and try a round together. <laughs> Okay, did that make sense how a round works? 
Okay, before we play around together, let's play the song straight through one time at the same time. One, two, three, four. <laughs> start playing but I don't want you to start playing until I get to number two okay and then I'm gonna finish before you but you keep playing and then I'll come back and talk to you okay so let me go first one two three four <laughs> it again. This time I'm not going to count off because all you have to do is listen and start when I get to number two. Make sure your beat is lined up with mine. So maybe before you play, you're tapping the beat along with me. And I'm going to go a little bit slower. covered a lot in this lesson today. I hope you had fun playing around. You know, you could actually record yourself like I did. You don't have to get all fancy with the video, but you could record yourself playing, start your recording, and play along with yourself. It's pretty fun to do. You can do duets that way, too. In fact, you know, I've been thinking a lot about how to make music since a lot of my students are pretty sad that they can't do concerts. So we're trying to come up with some creative ways where we can share recordings with each other. Maybe even do a type of virtual concert where we send each other our recordings and compile them. We're, we're thinking of some ideas. You should make music at home with your family. Show them what your trombone sounds like. I'm sure you've got people who can sing at your house. I'm sure you've got people that play other instruments. Record those things and share them with your teacher. Share them with your friends. Share them with the world. We need music right now because music makes us happy. And I don't want you to forget that, okay? Thanks for joining me today and keep on working at becoming a better trombone player.